Right. So thank you very much, um, Jess and, and Claire, for the invite to talk about my research today. I too grew up in um, a new town, a partnership new town of Warrington. And um, so there may be some personal reflections as well, but maybe not. Um, I'm going to try and stick to this script. So um, I'm, I'm here today to talk about my pro research project called Days of the New Town, which is looking at the partnership new town of Warrington and specifically the area of Birchwood. Has anyone heard of Birchwood? Thank you. Ooh, thank you. Three people. Um, so Birchwood is the largest of five areas created by the expansion of um, Warrington upon it being designated a partnership new town in 1968. And the crux of the Days of the New Town project is to gain an insight into how Warrington New Town Development Corporation staff imagined Birchwood as they were designing and building it and how residents imagine it today and to think about the points of possible convergence and divergence between the two and see where that takes me to the next stage of the project because it is ongoing. Um, and this event today in Milton Keynes has given me the opportunity to consider what the term placemaking means and how it might relate both to Birchwood, how it was originally marketed to prospective residents, and how my own research may have implications for placemaking in Warrington. So there is going to be a part of this um, where I actually try to define placemaking. Um, so Warrington, probably aware, it's kind of equidistant between Liverpool and Manchester. I'm a human geographer. I've got to start with a map. Um, it's not. There's Birchwood circled in the yellow there. It's, it's five miles northeast of the, the old town of Warrington. And this, um, indulging probably all of our love for 1970s graphics, or well, 1960s graphics in this case, this is taken from a leaflet posted through the door of every Warrington resident in 1969 to explain to them what the development corporation means. It's only one page of a, of a, of a quite a comprehensive 20-page leaflet. But they didn't want to commit themselves to putting this against a, an ordnance survey map to show where the, uh, who was going to be kind of affected by this expansion. But Birchwood is, is obviously the, the northeasterly blob at the top. And despite it being, I think, one of the smallest, it is actually was due to be one of the largest areas in terms of the residents. They wanted 20,000 residents to move to Birchwood. That's in, in reality now, it's, it's between um, 11 and 12,000 people. Birchwood is roughly 2.5 miles east to west and 1.5 miles north to south. So residents of the Development Corporation built housing began moving in from about 1976 onwards, and my own family moved there in 1980, and my parents still live there, and indeed I travelled from there today. Um, so the initial motivation for the project was to find out more about a landscape that I knew intimately. Um, I'm not going to talk about figurative sculpture today because there isn't any in Birchwood and there's not very much in Warrington in the, in the expansion areas. But I'm going to argue that the kind of planning approach that I'm going to talk about, the ecological planning approach that was uh, the term that the Development Corporation used, is kind of what I'm talking about with the, um, that's Birchwood's public art, if you like. Um, so Birchwood is where the Development Corporation's landscape design team made their most significant statement on what they termed their ecological planning approach. And in short, that was to design an urban woodland um, in Birchwood and in some of the other expansion areas, but certainly Birchwood is the most extensive example of that. And this is a typical, this was given to me by the, this photograph was given to me by the, the head landscape architect who I, I interviewed, David Scott. And he is showing me here the typical kind of like green corridors that were built of what have become extremely dense vegetation. This photograph is from the 1980s. Um, David Scott was assisted by Robert Truguet, who brought the philosophy of the ecological approach to the Development Corporation in Warrington. And it's inspired in large part by the Dutch heme parks or homes in parkland. Um, now, because of the unique set of circumstances around the stewardship of new towns, where, as you'll all know, the Development Corporation kind of dissolves, the local authority eventually takes over, for Birchwood, this meant that the vision and philosophy of the ecological planning approach didn't continue at that point of dissolution of the Development Corporation in about 1990. Um, the Warrington Borough Council took over, and their historical kind of a approach to green space maintenance was the kind of horticultural approach of the Victorian parks in Old Warrington that they've, they got used to maintaining. And this presented a different philosophy that um, kind of meant that there was there wasn't the resources or the kind of um, vision to, to continue with this ecological planning approach. So for example, 
in um, some of the nursery species of trees that were planted and designed to be cut down after 20 years were never cut down. And what we have in Birchwood now is some, as I've, I've said, extremely dense vegetation that's never really been coppiced. This is a picture from the Development Corporation archive from about 1980 of a residential path, no name, it doesn't have a name, no, no streets, no pathways in Birchwood have names. They just kind of link one residential area to another. But you can see here the beginning of a green corridor and that was a picture I took of that same pathway last year. I wasn't up a ladder like the photographer in the 1980s, so the perspective is slightly different, but you can appreciate the dense vegetation that I'm talking about. Um, so uh, at, the, at the time in the 70s, the hopes for the ecological planning approaches, outcomes for residents were undoubtedly utopian and can be seen here in a paper that Tregay wrote in 1983, which he identifies the benefits of four residents of living in this urban forest. And one of them you'll see is nature is a dynamic outdoor art form. So this was the, the artistic statement that, that, that Warrington Development Corporation made, was basically planting the trees. Um, but he also suggests that it's a social catalyst, which uh, was a, is a very, I think, a very kind of utopian aim and a very difficult to, to see through, especially when you've got these the changes of stewardship that I've talked about. Short sort of little talk about the play spaces of, War of Birchwood. Um, the landscaping involved numerous small play spaces that were designed to be on the doorstep of the housing, accessible to the Development Corporation residents' children without the need to cross any main roads. There's been a lack of maintenance of these and most were, were removed in the 1990s, although uh, Birchwood District Council, responding to poor health outcomes in Warrington as a whole, have installed an outdoor gym in this very space that we're seeing here. Again, this is taken in the early 80s, and this is that same area today. It, it looks like a very nice, and it is a very nice uh, landscape, little area with grass and everything. Um, it's devoid of play equipment, though, and um, in fact, one of the housing associations that had taken over quite a lot of the housing in Birchwood installed a sort of one-piece plastic thing um, that was designed for children to play on. And unfortunately, it was, it was kind of burnt down within a few kind of weeks of it being up there. And so they just sort of planted grass. And this was the fort, um, the fort locally known as the fort, a, a, a wooden play area with, with quite nice sculptural qualities, which Robert Tregay himself designed. And uh, that was, this is from the early 80s, that picture. This is that same area today. So they planted a tree where the fort once stood, um, but again, devoid of, of your play equipment. So I want now to talk about the sort of ways that Birchwood was marketed. Um, the, the images created here, again, um, lovely 70s brooches and really, really nice kind of illustrated um, pieces to, that were given to prospective residents interested in moving to Birchwood. Um, they undoubtedly clearly used the idea of Birchwood's urban forest as a key factor in making the place appear attractive to young families. Um, I would pose the question as to, to you all today as to whether or not people think that this is an attempt at placemaking. Or, um, it's, it's, it's an attempt at creating an identity for the area. Um, can we call this placemaking? Obviously, they didn't use the term placemaking in those days. The, this is a um, contact sheet from, um, it shows Risley Moss, which is the local nature reserve, used in some promotional um, uh, material. I mean, the idea of like children, you know, just looking in, kind of not in awe, but you know, you could read that into it, into this lovely woodland, was, was heavily marketed to people who were coming in from Liverpool, from Salford, from Manchester, and from other areas, where the assumption was they've never seen a tree in their lives. Um, not true in, in most people's cases. Um, but yeah, so I've, ter I've used the term sense of place in the research so far to think about how the Development Corporation staff and residents each render Birchwood as meaningful. Rather than thinking of the term placemaking, which to me, I must admit, I'm very much open to being contradicted here, but my association with the term placemaking so far has been it's about a top-down mar top marketing strategy underpinned by motivations to economically regenerate an area by inviting a reimagining of a place that may already have developed a set of existing and possibly negative meanings over time. Because um, I've looked in the past at various kind of um, 
big mega events sort of cultural events like the capital of culture in Liverpool and thought about what placemaking seems to mean and it seems to be about reimagining a set of negative meanings in some places but for me the days of the Newtown project is an invitation to consider not only the cultural history of this area Birchwood but the idea that Birchwood has a cultural history um, so as a place Birchwood has a somewhat ambiguous status it's not a town on its own but it is officially part of Warrington, but it geographically sits outside the town. The original residents of the Development Corporation housing weren't from Warrington. In fact, that was a criteria that the original residents of the Development Corporation housing had to meet was that they couldn't actually be from Warrington. Um, that contributes to Birchwood's outsider status, which still holds for some more elderly residents of Warrington today. So I'll just talk about what Days of the New Town has kind of done so far. It's involved interviews with Development Corporation senior staff it's involved interviews and focus groups with residents and it's involved a photographic exhibition at Warrington Museum and Art Gallery. Using a small grant from my university, I was able to pay the local archive in Chester who hold the Warrington Newtown Development Corporation archive to scan basically all of the holdings of the photographs of Birchwood, um, which were all taken from around about the early 70s into about 1983-4. I selected just 20 of these scans to be reproduced for the Warrington exhibition and there's also a blog which is the main sort of a repository of all of the photographs. Um, so that's, that's up there, that's, what, that's kind of there now. Um, and part of that exhibition was uh, the People's Archive. So I'd, I'd asked people who live in Warrington, uh, Birchwood to kind of like scan in, take photographs of their own photos, their own family albums. And I spent about a year prior to the exhibition doing that. And in the end, it was projected on a wall. So the two kind of archives almost ended up kind of talking to each other sort of thing. That was the idea. Um, just a word about the whole idea of exhibition spaces. Warrington Museum and Art Gallery was purpose built in the 1850s. It's in, centrally located in Warrington. Um, the lack of any communal cultural spaces in Birchwood was highlighted by this project by the fact that so far the exhibition has not been shown in Birchwood itself. An attempt to mount it at Birchwood Library, which is attached to the high school in Birchwood, was not successful because there were, um, I was told there wasn't the staff and resources to actually put the pictures up and keep the projection to project a going and things like that. Um, there's no dedicated spaces that could be used for exhibitions in Birchwood today. There was a magnificent building called the Spectrum Arena, which was um, built uh, when it was, Birchwood was first opened. It was a multiple use space, it was a theater, um, it was a, a place for music, live music. There was a bar there, there was a gym, etc. That is now a Betfred call centre, that particular building. So um, that's not there as a kind of the communal cultural space that was supposed to be um, in centrally located in Birchwood in what was called the Leisure Street. Unfortunately, Leisure Street has, uh, was demolished two years ago. So no cultural spaces is what I'm saying. Um, so the other thing I wanted to say was interestingly about the whole idea of Birchwood being this kind of cultural outsider to Warrington. Warrington's history was presented in a timeline about four or five years ago in Warrington Museum and it goes up to the present day but the new town expansion was not mentioned at all in that in that timeline so and we're not just talking about Birchwood there's all sorts of expansion areas and arguably the new town expansion did kind of breathe economic life into Warrington, but it was, it was kind of at this cultural level, it's kind of being um, weirdly kind of ignored. Um, so a final word about the, the cultural space that I've been using in Birchwood, which again, wasn't, wasn't, um, I wasn't able to mount the exhibition there, but it's, it's the visitor center of Risley Moss, which is the nature reserve that you saw pictures of earlier. Um, there's historic evidence that Risley Moss is a highly prized asset to the residents of Birchwood. It was going to be closed down by Warrington Borough Council um, when the Development Corporation wound up in 1989-90. And at that point, it had only been open for about eight years. Um, but there was a successful resident-led campaign to keep it open. It's open today. And again, more recently, local residents helped raise over £10,000 to help rebuild an observation tower looking out over the moss. Um, after the original was destroyed by arsonists, possibly the same arsonists that did for the plastic um, children's play area. We don't actually know. Some people say they do know who they, they are, but they're still at large, these arsonists. Um, the community attachment to Risley Moss speaks of how the ecological planning approach has endured and has contributed to a sense of place for residents. Um, in terms of the exhibition, 
Um, it is over now. It was up for six months in Warrington. And I, my hope for that exhibition was that it allowed the visitor to consider how both the design team of the Development Corporation Imagine Birchwood and how residents imagine it. Um, the photographs in the exhibition and on the blog resonate most strongly with residents of Birchwood. Um, it's they who recognise the places in the photographs and they have had a really varied and vivid set of responses to seeing these places as they were 30 to 40 years ago. Um, a lot of these responses are captured on the project's Facebook page. If you don't like swear words, don't look at the Facebook page comments of a lot of these photographs. Not, not because people are being in any way nasty, but they are talking in very vivid terms about what these places mean to them. And um, some of the really exciting architecture that was built as part of some of the industrial estates in Birchwood, I posted up with information about who the architects were and you know, pictures of when they were first built in that usual kind of like, you know, the black and white photograph and the, the concrete is all pristine. And people respond to that by saying, oh yeah, my mum used to work in there. It's a shithole, you know? And so there's, there's that, that level of like meaning of what these places mean. It, it, it's, it's an ongoing process to sort of think about like, it's not all, yeah, what the planner intended. There's, there's this whole, very complex and very nuanced dimension to what the, how the residents make meaning of these places and these buildings and indeed the green spaces. Um, so yeah, like residents have made some very supportive comments about the project and they've given me the confidence to claim that it's a very small way it's been impactful for some residents in terms of how they relate to Birchwood. I'll leave it there for now, thank you.